America, England, Canada. None of these even come close to the world's most obese country. That title belongs to a bizarre tiny island with a disturbing fate. Despite having a speed limit of 25 miles an hour, a police chief once ordered a Lamborghini, only to realize he was too fat to fit inside. Labeled as the country that ate itself, I wanted to investigate what really made 94.5% of the population overweight. How does a police chief on a remote, not so long ago tribal island afford a Lamborghini? And when essentially everyone is overweight, can we really just blame their lack of willpower? This is an investigation into how the world's richest island became the most obese country in the world. An obesity crisis among specific islanders. The Nauruans could be one of the sickest nations in the world. 1778. The British whaling ship Snow Hunter, captained by John Fern, discovered an island. The captain thought the island was pleasant, so called it Pleasant Island, an ironic name for what was to come. The 12 points of a star represent each of the tribes that ruled. They would trade food for alcohol, cigarettes and guns. And in 1878, after a drunken shooting, a 10 year civil war broke out, almost halving the population. Germans turned up on a massive gunboat, taking control of the island. They confiscated guns, banning alcohol, native dancing and traditions. The island wasn't seen as important until 1899, when geologist Albert Ellis noticed a rock-like object propping open the door of a trading firm. He was told it was a piece of petrified wood from the root, but this didn't seem right, so he had to test it. And to his delight, it was actually a ball of bird shit. Now, before we label him as batshit crazy, guano could be used as a super fertilizer to grow foods. 80% of Nauru was covered in this, and he was about to become very rich. So he struck a deal with the Germans to begin mining in 1906, shipping phosphate around the world for a huge profit. By 1968, one third of Nauru had been strip mined, and the ruins were living on a narrow ring around a massive jagged dystopian limestone pillars. Australia offered to relocate the ruins to a nearby island, but this would be under Australian rule. So they decided to stay and became the third smallest nation in the world. They brought the Phosphate Commission and faced a big dilemma. To finally get their hands on some of the wealth while obliterating the rest of the country, or to stop mining, stay in poverty, and preserve what was left of the island. In 1975, Nauru's Phosphate Royalties Trust was valued at well over a billion dollars, making them the world's richest country. The government built skyscrapers around the world, an airline, cruise ships, while every islander gained free schooling, medical care, dental care, bus transportation, and there was no tax. People would go into a shop, buy a few sweets, pay with a $50 note, and not take the change. They'd use money as toilet paper. As the wealth rose, so did obesity, from 2% to over 15% during a 15 year period. The traditional Nauruan diet was rich in raw fish and whole foods. Now that the land was being destroyed, Nauruans moved away from fishing and farming in favor of imports. These were seen as superior. They were more convenient and tasted better. Now, obesity. To help us make sense of what's going on, I called the author who wrote the definitive no bullshit guide to fat loss. A calorie surplus or a positive energy balance is a fundamental law of physics. All diets, all weight loss diets work via that mechanism. Calorie surplus for weight gain, calorie deficit for weight loss. This is why global obesity rates are rising. Humanity is consuming more food, which is largely correlated with a Western diet and the consumption of ultra-processed foods. In general, they are foods that typically don't resemble foods that you find in nature, and they are often created to be hyper-palatable, i.e. extremely delicious, created to be cheap, and they are often energy-dense. Here, we have a can of Spam, next to their traditional raw fish. The ultra-processed side is much easier to overconsume for a multitude of reasons. This is exacerbated by Nauruan culture. Food draws family together. In fact, the Nauruan term for satisfaction and feeling healthy, pueda, is the same as fullness. So as the percentage of ultra-processed foods in our diet increase, it naturally becomes harder to stop overeating. Great for the profits of companies, not so much the islanders. To understand just how bad things became, after spending 11 months studying obesity in Nauru, Dr. McLennan stated she was lucky to find one vegetable a week. Processed foods aside, most of the world's most obese countries are around the same area. 
Could this suggest a genetic element? In 1962, Dr. Neil proposed a theory, the thrifty gene hypothesis, which suggests some people are much more effective at gaining fat. When Polynesians first settled in Nauru, conditions were brutal and food scarce. The theory is that those able to gain and store more fat when food was available survived, passing on their genes to the next generation, an incredibly useful thing. Until you switch to a highly processed, nutrient deficient diet. This is when it becomes a problem. Now, there's a lot of modern science that disproves this theory, and the drifty gene hypothesis seems to be stronger, and it indicates that Pacific Islanders' genetic susceptibility to fat gain comes from random chance or genetic drift. Regardless, modern science can confirm that genetic factors make it more likely for certain people to default to a calorie surplus. You can think of those like a, a dimmer switch. So if someone came along and they had the ability to change one of your genes so you were significantly hungrier than you are now, even if everything else stayed the same, that would encourage you to consume more food. Genetics can also influence how much muscle we carry. Now, obesity is determined by BMI, an equation that only considers weight and height. This is why Dwayne Johnson is technically obese. It is a crude predictor of adiposity. So people that have very high BMIs tend to have high levels of body fat. In other words, it can be a flawed equation for more muscular people. And this can be skewed based on ethnicity. Studies suggest that Polynesians, on average, have more muscle than Europeans. In fact, despite being able to fit every single Nauruan inside this small stadium, one of the strongest men in the world originates from the island. Yeah, we are, we are built close to the ground like tanks. <laughs> so it's fully possible these statistics sound worse than they are. It's not necessarily a case of genetics always cause obesity in isolation, but it's more that people can be genetically susceptible to consuming more food in the first place and can find it harder to lose weight in response to a reduced calorie diet. And as Nauru was enjoying its wealth and imported foods, new problems were arising. Despite being only 19 kilometers around, with the phosphate money, an appreciation for exotic cars developed. One of the major recipients of the phosphate money uh, bought this um, brand new Lamborghini. The only problem was he was so big he couldn't fit into the car. While those higher up brought sports cars, public transport was free. The people no longer had to walk around as much. The farming and fishing industries took a big hit, as the land was destroyed by heavy machinery and cargo ships. Why would the nation worry about that when they could just import stuff? And why would people work manual jobs when they could just work for the government? The work is done by workers from the neighboring Gilbert and Ellis Islands and from Hong Kong. But less general activity and exercise wasn't the only reason why people were burning less calories. You see, it takes energy to break down foods, and this can vary depending on the food. In this study, multigrain bread and cheddar was compared with white bread and American cheese. The less processed option took almost 50% more calories just to digest. There's many potential reasons for this, but a key one is the macronutrient content. The lowest thermic effect comes from fat, lower than carbohydrates and protein. This is another reason why a high protein diet with enough fiber can be extremely helpful for weight loss. However, it has a small impact, so let's not get distracted. Typically speaking, the amount of energy you burn per day is, is very, very small relative to the amount of energy that you consume. For a variety of reasons, many Nauruans were now burning less calories. And with the phosphate supplies running out, new challenges were arising. Preparations are being made now for the future of the Nauruan people. The future lies with the children. Their prospects are bright. Their future is secure. In 2006, Nauru's phosphate reserves were depleted. Most of the nation's wealth was lost through corrupt politicians and poor investments. Even the central bank went bankrupt and assets were repossessed. We helped them, but we made money doing it and I don't apologize for that. It's called business. Those managing the trust fund completely squandered the $1.7 billion, forcing the country to sell the Nauru house and other prized investments to loan companies. That's, that's like our flagship in Australia. I mean, for me to walk around in Melbourne and look at that building with the blue star on top, 
makes me proud, but now it's gone. Uh, it, it is hard to take. The island returned to a life of poverty. Only now, they were unable to grow their own food. The environment was destroyed. People on the island could now only afford cheaper cuts of meats, such as turkey tails, mutton flaps, and spam. This meat isn't sold in other countries. Did you know that? These were considered waste meats by Australia, who shipped them off to poorer Polynesian islands like Nauru, who, with their culture of feasting, welcomed them. This has gone on for so long, the Samoa even considers turkey tails a national dish. Now, imported fresh food is available, but not many people can afford a $61 watermelon. In 2007, the World Health Organization estimated 94.5% of Nauruans to be overweight or obese. As popular media sites labeled the island as lazy, lacking in willpower, the country that ate itself. But the evidence shows a different side to the story that quite a few people would prefer us not to know about. And to say Pleasant Island's experience and the consequences would be a massive understatement. I'm worried because of my food. I don't want to take off my food. <laughs> yeah. Today, many Pacific Islanders live with obesity and its associated health issues. The life expectancy for men is under 60 years old. I really want to know what caused diabetes. Excess sugar in your, in your blood from eating. Food. Okay. Many islanders have diabetes-related amputations, making it much more difficult to be physically active at all. People unaware that the desolate wasteland they see used to be a picturesque island. In the words of a Nauruan church minister, I wish Nauru could be like it was before. When I was a boy, it was so beautiful. There were trees, it was green everywhere, and we could eat the fresh coconuts and breadfruit. Now I see what happened here, and I want to cry. I wish we'd never discovered that phosphate. More people are trying to diet now than they were 50 years ago, but they are fighting a system that makes it harder for them. Everything is being optimized for convenience, and the Pacific Islands are resorting to drastic measures to try and help. Dr. Salilo Tomiki is trying to help two of his dental technicians lose weight. He has wired their jaws shut so they can only consume a liquid diet. This poster was created by Nauruan kids on National Diabetes Awareness Day. Many of them will have lost their mothers and fathers to obesity, some of which we may have seen earlier. People are very aware of the negative consequences, and what needs to be done on an individual level. But external factors make weight loss more difficult. This is why personal trainers shouting, eat less and move more, hasn't cured obesity. It can be compared to telling a drowning person that they need to drown less and swim more. Less than 1% of people that participate in, in, in these sort of programs maintain the actual weight that they lose. I think it's easy to blame the individual because on a very basic level, that person has consumed too much energy relative to how much they have expended. So there is obviously an element of individual responsibility within that. The reason why I think it makes far more sense to zoom out and look at the other factors that drive that intake is because if you look at weight gain rates over the past 50 years, regardless of age, sex, country are all going up but if you look at dieting rates they also tend to go up so it's not a case of people are not trying anymore so rather than pointing the finger of blame at the person i think it makes sense to zoom out and ask why so many people are struggling with their weight what happened in Nauru is happening across the rest of the world Calories consumed being higher than calories burnt is always going to weigh people gain weight. It's just that there's many more factors which can influence us. Now, if you're struggling with your weight, this should be good news because you might not need to wire your jaw shut. 
Now, it turns out that Ben's talents extend beyond giving Vira wedding speeches. And he's actually one of the best guys in the fitness industry. He told me I didn't have to promote his book, Everything Fat Loss, but this is in my top five fitness books of all time. You can see all my notes on it. And I think the reviews speak for themselves. So if your goal is fat loss, I can really recommend his book. Now, this video took a lot to make. So I greatly appreciate everyone who likes the video, comments, and shares it around. I really enjoy making this type of content, and I also have a free newsletter where I try and help you develop your fitness resilience, as that's what we're all about here. So I hope you found this enjoyable, and I'll see you in the next video.